project for thorough regeneration, which is now referred to in the report to TRL, uh, but it's the second for private company that acts in partnership with Thorough Council to help boost house building across the borough. The report outlines um, the intention, if agreed, to allow TRL to develop 18 new homes on Belmont Road sites. This will help the company towards its original goal of 300 to 500 homes. As we know, Thorough has always been expected to deliver a significant amount of new homes to meet the, needs, uh, meet the new housing needs. Over the years, the housing needs have been driven by many factors, including increased employment opportunities within the borough, decreased commuting times by train to London. London was moving to Thorough to cash in on much higher London prices compared with those in Thorough at the time, as well as the normal expansion of families that lived in the borough for decades. However, our proximity to London, a patchwork of smaller sites, and having a local plan, plan that strengthens the decisions to rightly reject certain applications means we rarely meet the numbers expected per annum. Agreeing that this paper tonight will mean that we will take a step forward to delivering them in the future. Without doubt, two of the planning and building objectives that every council supports is building on brownfield sites instead of green belts and building more council houses. Well, this proposal meets both. Whilst the site is overgrown, it most certainly is in Greenbelt. The proposed site will include green spaces in the form of three pocket parks, one of which will have play equipment on it, so it will not just be rows of houses, there will be places for children to play. As important, 28 affordable homes on the site will be new council housing. Yes, new council housing. These will be funded by the utilisation of the right to buy receipts, and the capital receipts for the Chad site. To repeat, that's building 20, 28 new council homes, that's 28 new homes sitting in the HRA, 20 new, 28 families living uh, in council properties from the housing needs register. These are over and above all other previously announced council house building and hopefully will be the first of many more. Whilst this is good news, and I do think it is good news, we cannot escape that the building developer um, is false to TRL and not to the council. So for that reason, we must be mindful of the commercial confidentiality of certain aspects of the arrangement between the council and TRL. As a council, we invest in TRL to help deliver our housing building aspirations and for the returns it offers. These returns are in the form of new homes, new council housing, and showing <coughs> the house building industry that Thorough is the right place to develop in the right areas. Equally, we're looking for financial returns. These financial returns will help with the medium-term financial stability of the council, showing that we're not just looking to fund services and transformation from the pocket of the taxpayer. In order to keep that confidence, the financial model has been shared with the group leaders and no objection has been raised. I'm sure the last thing that members wish to do is to put TRL at the commercial disadvantage and potentially impact the benefits that may come to Thorough from this development. So I would ask, with this in mind, when members ask questions, uh, not to make them about things that would be classed as commercially confidential. <coughs> at the beginning of my speech, this development will help Gloriana, stroke TRL as it is now, towards its original goal of 350 to 500 homes. <coughs> my personal view is it's not bold enough, and we will be bringing forward plans to allow TRO to grow from central strength in the very near future. So I do hope that the whole chamber can get behind this and endorse uh, this, the report this evening. It is an exciting step in our regeneration um, and hopefully we can proceed uh, with this as soon as possible and get on with the job of building houses in these new council houses. And with that, Mr Mayor, I present the report. Thank you, Mr. Council. Councillor Sell, if you wish to comment. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, thank you for your report, Councillor Kevin. Um, I think it is good news. Um, I think you know, we, we, we do need to build houses Sites, so it's a little bit better, uh, so it's a little bit more of a for the future use. Um, the problem we had with some chats was uh, we, we lost a lot of the uh, affordable housing uh, percentage due to the, the groundwork wasn't done particularly well, it seems, and uh, there was a lot of contamination there which caused the fortune to get sorted. Can we be assured that the groundworks for this site will be completed and we won't have any unforeseen issues with contamination going forward? Thank you, Councillor Thank you, Councillor Sell, for your uh, kind words and indeed a very good question. Obviously, you can't foresee something that's unforeseen. Um, we uh, understand that there has been a lot more uh, work that have been done, 
um, in relation to uh, checking the site, and indeed the site wasn't the site an old school where the pond didn't actually assume. Um, things like asbestos would be left after its demolishment. Uh, of course, if there is uh, problems that do start coming forward, then uh, I'm sure CRL is the private company that will be running this. Uh, we will bring it forward to the shareholders. Thank you, Professor Gerish. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I think we do agree that Thorough Regeneration Limited is an important part of the mix for delivering houses for Thorough people in the coming decades. And I will be supporting the decision this evening. However, we must make sure within that that we learn some of the lessons of the St. Chad's site. We need better communication with residents. We need to deliver on the promise of a high proportion of affordable housing. We need to make sure those properties are quickly occupied. We need to be more sympathetic to the surrounding community and involve them through the whole process of the development. So, Mr. Mayor, I do hope that the portfolio holder can therefore give the commitment that we have learned those costs as outlined by Councillor Snell, plus others, uh, and that's to flow to uh, the residents of Thorough Brook across the board. Um, and I will be pushing and making sure, um, with my regular meetings, um, that um, we are still going to deliver those 28. Indeed, for me, that would be a red line for the CRL to come back to the planning uh, committee. Uh, and say that we need to change. Um, should that happen, and I should I be uh, an elected member, I will be standing against that application. Thank you. Uh, I know Pam, Pam, the leader just mentioned the planning committee. It has I think, already gone through planning. Uh, in case it does come back, members of that committee might be aware, uh, so you be careful about how you frame your questions. Uh, thank you. Councillor Kerry. Thank you, Mr. Thank you for some very positive reports. As one of the councillors for Grazer Riverside, I'm very pleased to see regeneration happening on my patch. Uh, the <coughs> sort of issue that I can foresee or to I'm worried about is the effect on congestion, but more specifically, how this will affect <coughs> excuse me, current congestion around Parker Road, <coughs> especially during term time and during school pickup at times for Belmont Park Academy. So I wonder if you could give us any assurance on how that would be dealt with. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you, Councillor Kerry, for your question. Um, yes, we're all aware of the uh, problems that uh, relate to those roads are quite obvious if you tend to come to a sudden stop with no alternative method of um, uh, reversing or coming round. My understanding from the application, it actually joins the three roads that lead up, which is the links uh, Belmont, Castle, and Rosebury, um, uh, which will obviously help uh, people travelling up there to be able to get out to the children and come back. Um, I'd like to say I've got a crystal ball to see how well it work in the future. Uh, any new housing will obviously put um, a strain on uh, infrastructure and we do our absolute utmost to ensure that it doesn't get to the point of the uh, grid loss as we've seen with uh, many others uh, in the past. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, Councillor Pothicare. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Gledhill, for the report. Um, I can one really pleased that this is, is coming to full council. It's something that, that um, has been quite interesting since the beginning, um, when it first was was kind of suggested. Um, I welcome the scheme. It will bring more housing. There are the affordability options, and um, the news that 28 will be set aside for HRA is really really great news. Um, obviously, I'll echo points that um, other people have made about wanting to make sure that the actual outcome fulfils. Um, the aspiration. Um, if the people who don't know, the piece of land is, like Councillor Gledhill says, it's, it's a piece of land that has been a problem um, for local residents, often complaining about the fact that it's, um, you know, it's a bit of a magnet for fly tipping. Although I think residents are slightly concerned about the upheaval that this is going to bring to their life, they're concerned about the parking, because um, again, parking is really, really bad in those roads. It's Victorian terraces. Uh, they weren't designed to have three or four cars, but with the uh, housing crisis, that's what we have in the house nowadays. Um, so I am seeking some, some further guarantees about <coughs> parking. We would like to see some action at the top of Parker Road, where we think that there could be some changes to the way out there. The <coughs> are being rebuffed by highways, so we would really like to try and progress those. The other thing I'd like to raise is the issue of primary school places in the West of Grays. Um, so whilst welcoming um, this development, I do have slight concerns that this development, plus the massive development that got okayed by planning committee on the London site, the London Road Gas Works, um, against my, um, my protestations, um, is the fact that Belmont Castle Academy is full. There are no more places, there will be no more building. As far as that's what we've been told about Belmont Castle Academy, the suggestion is the children go to Tenningside. 
I used to do that walk because I went to Belmont Castle Academy and then I moved to the to live close to the centre. It's a 50 minute walk. It is not good. People are going to use their cars, and obviously that adds the pressure on London Road and the rest of Rosehill Centre. So I'd like to, to hope that this is that there is going to be a large piece of work as well around small places. Thank you. We've only got two minutes left on this item, so if you choose to respond to that. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for your uh, question, Councillor Kerry. Um, I'd be more than happy to have a meeting with yourself and indeed the other ward councillors in relation to the parking. I fully appreciate where you're coming from. It's one of the issues we've raised all the way through the 2014 consultation, uh, where we were knocking on doors through any number of uh, elections over the past couple of years. Uh, it's the thing that's become at the forefront, so I'm more than happy to uh, have that meeting with yourselves and the councillors or the appropriate officers. Um, when it comes to uh, primary school places, obviously the last thing I personally would want is all these uh, parents and take their children to Thames Island School, throw it opposite my house and block up the road more so than it gets blocked up every single morning. Um, I will be speaking to uh, Councillor Halden uh, and indeed the appropriate officers, but I think one of the things we do need to be looking at for local school is how planning interacts uh, with um, education and education department and outside with the planning team. Uh, we do need to be realistic about um, uh, where children go. This three miles is actually great, it's probably fantastic when it was originally set up, but now this is a modern, <coughs> uh, a modern society where people just haven't got the time, we haven't got the infrastructure to be able to ship people up here, there, and everywhere. Um, so I think part of that um, meeting perhaps we should discuss that and start building up something further for the whole of the authority to take part in. Thank you, uh, Leader. We have run out of time with this. We've got quite a few people who still want to ask questions and we have a bunch of to run out of time. Peter, do you want to sum up? Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, sorry that for those that have uh, uh, asked questions, the questions you wish to speak to me after all tomorrow afternoon when I return from my 2050 meeting, uh, I'm more than happy to meet you or discuss with you uh, then. Um, I would like to move the uh, report as written, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. <coughs> The recommendation is uh, written up on page 194 of the agenda. Uh, recommendation 1.1 <coughs> that Thoroughbred Generation Limited develop the Belmont Road Grey site in accordance with the uh, consented plan application. That, is that agreed? Agreed. And 1.2 agree that uh, the authority be dedicated to section 151 officer in consultation with the chief exec and the portfolio holder for finance and the leader to agree the final funding for TRL and to enter into legal agreements as